Hi there, when I made the uh, gear cover screws in video number 5 um, I used this knurling tool and uh, it does actually exert quite a bit of pressure on the uh, on the side of the item you're trying to make and uh, I did receive a comment from Clive Wood uh, of New Zealand and he suggested that uh, I actually use that as a paperweight <laughs> and uh, uh, he, he suggested I uh, got a kit from Hemingway's uh, in the UK, um, which I did. And th this has arrived today, and it's a Hemingway kit uh, to make a knurling tool. And it's one of those knurling tools that sort of like does a pincer type of uh, movement. So uh, in this video, I'm going to have a go at making it. So let's see what we've got. And some instructions. So those are the items. Um, it comes with a very comprehensive set of instructions and plans. Unfortunately I can't show you those on video because um, they're subject to copyright. Um, so I need to go away and uh, start doing some reading. Um, I've just realised actually, having, having had a quick look, that the, uh, the actual nerves are sold separately. Uh, which is a bit of a disappointment, but uh, anyway, um, let's see how we get on. Well, this is turning out to be quite an expensive little hobby. Um, with this being my first uh, major project uh, in relation to uh, producing something based on plans, uh, I thought it would be appropriate to uh, invest in a surface plate and a height gauge. Now the surface plate came from Kronos. Um, seems pretty good, very very heavy. Uh, the height gauge came from Arc. Um, slightly disappointed in that because with me being right handed I would have liked to have had the readout on this side but I guess it doesn't really matter because once the height is defined then you don't really need to see the readout I suppose. Um, I've also bought um, a scribe and an automatic centre punch now the first part of the project is to cut to size the sides and this little divider that uh, goes in between the sides. Now I've done that already on the mill. Um, and on these pieces what I've done to remind myself is I've put um, a black um, line of felt tip on here to um, tell me that that is the face that I will use on, on the actual face plate and likewise on this side that is the face I will use to sit on the face plate I've also put some marks on here to tell me that these are the outside of the sides as opposed to the inside of the sides so let's see how we get on well, I've not got any posh marking out uh, fluid so I'm just using this sharpie pen Okay, so I've done the marking out for four holes and I'm just going to use my new automatic centre punch. I'm not sure whether it's advisable to do this um, on a surface plate, but no doubt people will comment on that. So I think that uh, the idea is, once I've drilled the various holes, is then to transfer the holes onto the side plate. So the first two holes will be tapped to an M6 thread. Um, so what I need to do is to centre drill and then um, use a 5mm drill bit.
Okay, so now I need to transfer these holes onto the other side plate. So I'll just hold it secure in the vise. It's all nicely lined up. So here I've got a 5mm transfer punch. There we go. So now I'll need to drill these two 6mm holes. And to just to make sure that I'm lined up with the drill. Uh, I've put the side plate on that's already been drilled and lined it up and locked the X and Y axis. So now I can try and take this plate off without moving the other one. That looks that looks spot on. So these are going to be 6mm holes. Well that is looking very very good so far. Ok so this is the spacer that goes between the uh, side plates. And the hole dimensions are exactly the same as the one I've uh, done before. And the six millimeters. So I've uh, joined the two side plates up with a spacer inside. Um, not sure whether I should do this with or without the spacer, but I've decided to do it with the spacer. And um, the plan is to drill and ream a quarter of an inch diameter hole right through to accommodate this steel pin, which will hold the arms in place. Uh, so I've centre drilled, first of all, and um, I'm going to drill uh, firstly with a 5mm diameter drill bit, then a 6, and then I'll ream to a quarter of an inch.
perfect. So I'll repeat this process on this side now. Well I must say that's worked out very well so far. Um, really happy with the result. Um, the reaming worked very well as well. Um, so that pin fits in nicely in there as it does in the top. Um, so the next stage will be to um, fit this tool block. Now the tool block goes on this side. Um, but I need to work out um, just exactly where to put that. So I need to make some measurements on the lathe. Well the tool block turned out to be very straightforward, it's just a pinch, piece of uh, half inch by half inch mild steel and uh, after measuring it on the lathe I concluded that it needed to be spot on the centre line. Um, as such uh, I did change the um, dimensions uh, from plan. Uh, the plan said uh, one and an eighth of an inch distance between these two holes uh, but I made it uh, just an inch in order to avoid uh, one of these screw holes coming through the back. Um, all in all, very, very happy. Uh, now the next stage will be to do the pivot arms and the instructions seem to be very much based around doing on the lathe using a vert vertical slide. Um, now I'm going to be doing it on the mill, so I, ne I need to do a lot of reading up on this, I think. Um, and this will be uh, subject to part two of the video. Um, so, hope to see you in a bit.